Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I am Dr. Mahesh Chandra, uh, Principal Scientist with Indian Council of Agriculture Research, currently working at Indian Veterinary Research Institute. I will be talking about government policy and various government schemes on organic farming. You might be hearing a lot about organic farming in recent times and you will be interested in what actually organic farming is. Let me tell you first the winds of change, how things are changing in agriculture sector and food system sector. Consumers are increasingly looking for fresh, safe and high quality products. So, you see the trend that earlier people would simply look for food, whatever is available they used to eat it and whatever is available now increasingly with growing education, income and all people are becoming more conscious about the food, it should be safe, it should be fresh and it should be of high quality. So, consumers are increasingly looking for fresh, safe and high quality products. There is willingness to pay for high quality food products including milk, meat and eggs. So, people are ready to pay if you might have seen milk in, uh, in the market is available right from 30 rupees per liters up to 100 rupees or 120 rupees per liters. So, people are looking for quality in any product which they are consuming because they know consuming good quality product is contributes to their good health. So, so they are ready to pay for it. So, premium prices you might have heard that organic products are selling at premium prices. There is some 20 to 30 percent more prices if conventional product is selling for 100 rupee. So, you can expect that organic product will be 130 or 140 even it could be up to 200 rupees double the price because of the quality. So, quality costs. So, in order to produce quality product people have to invest more in the quality or safety measures. So, also organic products, uh, there are big export revenues are possible in organic sector because in many developed countries, people are looking for the good quality food products and they are importing from the developing countries and wherever it is available, different countries are uh, importing organic products for their quality conscious consumers. So, number of the quality, consumer, uh, quality conscious consumer is gradually increasing everywhere in the world. Organic production offers good opportunity for developing country producers. So, people want to maximize their profit from agriculture, they want to increase their profits from agriculture production. Organic farming shows the way that they can do it by following organic practices, by having certified organic production, they can improve their income from the farming. Looking at the bright prospects for export and also growing uh, demand from the consumers within the country, uh, then government of India has divided policies and programs for organic agriculture development. So, it is the government of India is very sincerely pursuing programs on organic farming and also now recently uh, natural farming also. So, and various is not only the central government, various states have organic policy, organic certification bodies to certify organic production by the farmers or the producers. So, not only central government again I would say that many states have also uh, state specific organic promotion policies or production policies and then these favorable policies and program giving boost to organic production and export from the country. India is now an organic success story. I will, I will be talking about how India is organic success story in the global uh, situation. So, let me first tell you the timelines for various organic agriculture development uh, schemes and programs in India, how India progressed in organic sector, the various timelines I am talking to you. In 2001, national program on organic production was launched by Ministry of Commerce and Industry, especially by Agriculture and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority that is named as APIDA, which regulates organic agriculture progress in India including certification bodies through national accreditation body. 
so NAB. So, it is very important whenever you hear about organic agriculture development in India, national program on organic products production is the first thing which comes to mind. NPOP we call it in short then it is uh, operated by Ministry of Commerce and Industry in India, which looks after and regulates all organic programs, progress and all these things, especially NPOP deals with the organic agriculture product, which we are exporting to various countries. Then later on, National Center for Organic Farming was established in 2004. It is located in Ghaziabad in Uttar Pradesh. Now it has been renamed as National Center for Organic and Natural Farming. So, now all the related activities related to training and then guiding the farmers, developing standards and guidelines are these uh, being looked after by these two bodies, APIDA and NCONF at the national or the central government level in India. Then national project on organic farming was launched in 2005 by Indian Council of Agriculture. So, there are several state agricultural universities and ICR research institute so are having research projects on organic agriculture. So, NPOF is being nearly 30 institutions are working on and this NPOF project is coordinated by Indian Institute of Farming Systems Research that is in Modi Pram Uttar Pradesh. So, then there is a PGS participatory guarantee system was launched in 2011 by the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare which is with the secretariat, like a secretariat of NCONF, it is located in the NCONF at Ghaziabad. Participatory guarantee system is a, it is a certification mechanism wherein, so a uh, committee is there which satisfies and verifies that organic production is being uh, taken by farmer is they approve it, a committee approves under the end that this is we call it PGS certification. PGS certified products cannot be exported right now. So, it is for the local consumption. Suppose a farmer want to a farmer or group of farmers they want to have organic production and but they cannot afford price for third party certification or private certifiers and the third, third party certification. So, they go for PGS certification and the PGS certified product and you can say that it is a kind of precursor to third party certification also. Once we have certified we have got certified our product through PGS. So, it means that later on we can switch over to third party certification wherein the product produced out of the that kind of a system and certify then they, they are eligible for exports. So, now there is one third party certification and there is another participatory guarantee system of certification. Then Sikkim state was declared as organic state in 2016 because Sikkim is a small state and it is mostly mountainous. It was by default organic agriculture. So, it was thought that if it could be declared as organic, so already the farmers practices are more or less by default they are organic and they, it can be declared as organic state. It was declared in 2016 and the entire state nearly 75,000 hectares of land was certified as organic by third party certification and the government of uh, government uh, help the farmers to get certified their agricultural operation as certified organic. So, that was the beginning that the whole state was and that is one of the uh, brightest example all over the world cited as a declared organic state that is speaks about the government's pro for farming activity supporting uh, instance of the government that government declared is fully organic state. Then the Food Safety and Standard Authority of India FSSAI in December 2017 introduced the Javik Bharat logo because whenever people want to be satisfied they look into the logo. So, logo it means that this symbolizes that yes it is organic product. So, FSI, FSSAI launched the Javik Bharat logo whenever you look at in the market any product which says that it is organic product then you will see there are two logos are there. One is Organic India logo, I will later on show that how does it look and then Javik Bharat logo along with the certifiers uh, logo. The government of India must uh, announced in 2021 master's course on organic farming because when we are developing organic agriculture, we need to have 
a pool of quali pool of a qualified people who can train and who can teach organic agriculture. So, there was a master's course was uh, uh, announced by the government by the Indian Council of Agriculture Research. The curriculum has been developed for this course. Now, any agriculture university or any agriculture college, any institution want to have de deliver this, uh, this degree program on organic agriculture, so they can follow up the course content and which has been recommended and approved by the Indian Council of Agriculture Research way back in 2021. Then government also came up with a scheme, large area certification that is implemented in Andaman, Nicobar, Ladakh and Lakshadweep. So, large area certification scheme is a scheme where, see if a, it's a remote area, mountainous area where not much chemical have been used for long time. So, that such area already it is organic by default and no chemicals are used in that land. So, it is thought that why not to declare that area, that particular piece of land as organic area. So, we call this scheme as large area certification LAC and mostly some land has been uh, declared as certifi certified in Lakshadweep and also it is being attempted in Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Ladakh. You, you see that uh, Lakshadweep, Andaman and Nicobar, Ladakh, they are the remote areas, mostly not chemicals are used in islands and all. So, they are far flung areas inhabited by the some tribal people and those who are not, whether chemicals are not accessible to them, it is not available in the market. So, people go for the natural production and they, they follow the natural practices. So, they see this such area are eligible to be declared and this large area certification scheme is also being tried by can also be tried in many mountainous states because already use of chemical fertilizers and chemicals in agriculture is very less in these areas. So, then also later on it is also being uh, thought of and tried on it is being uh, done like declaring the full district as organic agriculture. Dang district in Gujarat was declared as organic district in 2021. Looking at the agriculture scenario in this particular district, it was seen that more than the 80 percent population nearly is tribal population which has not been using chemicals in agriculture. They do not use chemicals in agriculture. So, that is why it was thought that if they are not using chemicals in agriculture and pesticides are not being used, so why not to declare such districts as organic agriculture and the farmers can be trained on this kind of agriculture, organic agriculture practices, they can be introduced to this standards, organic standards and guidelines and this district can be later on can be developed as a organic district further by giving them proper training by improving their capacity. Say so, lot of organic agriculture related training related capacity building related or uh, bio inputs related activities are happening in such districts. In uh, coming time we can see that more districts are being declared as organic districts like organic villages and some this kind of thing. So, organic villages are also being tried in northeast and all where entire village is practicing organic farming and the products can be procured in such villages and which can be marketed at the premium price. Now, recently government of India has gone one step further by announcing uh, the natural farming certificate course, diploma course and degree course. So, degree course. So, those who are attending this course for one year and leaving the program, they are eligible to get certificate on natural farming. The curriculum for this has been uh, developed and then now the, the any agricultural education institution can take up this course and those who are attending this for one year and they will be given certificate. Those, those who attend it for two years, they will be given diploma certificate and those who do it for three years, so they can be given degree three and more years, they can be given degree program BSc in natural farming, certificate course in natural farming and diploma in natural farming. So, later on the masters in natural farming and doc, even doctorate is possible in coming years, we can see that because government want to big, big emphasis on natural farming. You know that in our ancestors have been surviving, sustaining on natural farming only because they have been following the natural practices, suppose for the sub pest management, disease management and all that kind of thing 
was they were not having and at that time chemicals were also not there. So, when chemicals were not there, they were depending on the natural process practices. So, whatever is available in the nature, they were using that thing and they were producing the farm products. So, now when we want to in decrease the production cost, so we have to reduce our dependence on the market. So, we have to if you have to reduce the dependence and rather than on the market, we have to do something on farm recycling of the resources. So, that the whatever is available that is recycled and circulatory agriculture practices can be followed up. We can have crop rotation and various agronomic protection practices and natural pest management practices, natural fertility management practices, all these kind of practices are being encouraged and under organic and natural farming both. So, chemical use in agriculture is going to be reduced significantly and for that this alternative system of agriculture in chemi rather than chem chemical agriculture. So, this natural farming and organic farming are is being promoted. So, then standards have also been developed for natural farming. So far, the standards were not there. Now, the government was very productive and very sincerely pursuing development of the standards for the natural farming, which have been developed. They, they are in the draft stage. Soon, it will be available in the public uh, like a document. So, once the then standards are available, then the people will go for organic and natural farming. The standards for organic farming are already there. Now, the standards for natural farming are also uh, available. So, people can go for as per their uh, interest and their choice. They can opt for organic farming, they can opt for natural farming and also no one is compelling any farmer not to do chemical oriented farming. All the options are available with the farmers. Given the availability of the market for their products, they can choose chemical oriented farming that is we call conventional farming and then wherein chemicals and pesticides, fertilizers and all use and they can also use organic farming where bio, bio pesticide, bio fertilizers are used and then when natural farming where natural products can be used. So, naturally products are produced naturally as it is in the on the, the farm farm level. Now, you must be looking on who will co who are the agencies which are coordinating all these studies. So, APIDA as I told in the beginning, this is one agency under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry Government of India, Agriculture and Processed Food Export Development Authority. Agriculture and Processed Food Products Development Authority, Export Development Authority, APIDA. So, it is based in Delhi. So, you can look into, they, you can uh, visit their website and you can look into National Program on Organic Production. You will find all the information related how organic production is done, what are the guidelines, what are the standards for it, what are the, who, which are the agencies which certify organic production. So, that kind of a standards you can find out in this website. So, it is available, you can, you can see it, all, all national program and organic production, you can find out. So, it is quite comprehensive document and it is downloadable also. NPOP document wherein all the standard for organic crop production, fruit and vegetable production and livestock production, poultry production, all these standards are there. If you are interested in converting switch over to organic farming, so you this document is, this is a very important document. So, you can see, you can find all the related information from the APIDA website and visiting this section on national program on organic production. You will see the all the standards, certification agencies and various guidelines and also you will find the export figures, how much India is exporting every year, on which commodity is being exported to which country, all that information you will get into the APIDA website. So, that is and especially on this uh, on the standards. Now, you must be thinking, so how we know that the product is organic? So, if you see in the market, especially in shopping malls, you go and any shopping, big shopping malls and you know metros you look into, you will find this logo. So, this is the India organic logo. So, any product which is being sold in the market, you will see invariably in this product. If you do not see this logo into the product, so that product is not really accredited, it is not approved as an organic product to be marketed. So, India Organic is a certification mark for organically farmed pro food products manufactured in India. The certification mark certifies that an organic food product conforms to the national standards for organic products established in 2000. So, it means that the if you see this logo that you get confirmation that this product has been produced as per the organic guidelines which have been 
developed and promoted and popularized by the national under the national program on organic production in india those standards these standards ensure that the product or the raw material used in the product are grown through organic farming without the use of chemical pesticides pesticides or induced hormones in case of animals we use some hormones and to improve their fertility and productivity the certification is issued by testing centers accredited by apida again so apida if there is a certification agency so then you must be thinking that you might be thinking who are which agency approve or accredit certification agencies there are about 30 certification agencies working in india which are accredited for certification by the apida again under the npop so once they have been accredited they they certify they make the producers as their client and certify their farming operation as organic operations so the certification is issued by testing centers accredited by the apida under the national program of organic production of the government of india so these standards are available since 2002 so but the certification mark this what you see the certification mark only came into existence in 2002 so you can look into whenever you are buying any organic products look for these logos another logo is there you find in organic product jaivik bharat that jaivik bharat and this logo is seen here you can look into it here this is a jaivik bharat logo you can find and the food safety and standard authority of india in december 2017 introduced the jaivik bharat logo to help customers identify authentic organic food you might have seen there there is lot of cheating people are making false claim that this is organic product so how to verify that so look this is a big problem in the market that everybody nowadays is claiming this is organic jaggery this is organic sugar this is organic tea coffee and many these are organic spices and it has become a fashionable thing to speak that this is organic product people 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 find that okay they are looking for organic product and so people they want to cast upon the opportunity and they are claiming it so don't go for this kind of uh, this one if people believe it look for the logos if you find this organic india logo jaivik bharat logo in the product and the mark at the logo of the certification agency which has certified the organic product and also the product product details which have been given to there so then the you look for them then you get certified organization and government promoting the jaivik bharat logo and certification process to make organic food more trustworthy because trust and confidence of the consumer winning the con confidence of the consumer is very important because then they need to, they should recognize the product is genuinely organic so if you want to see a genuine organic product look for these logos and be satisfied satisfied that yes this product is genuinely organic so now another thing is that so which areas are doing well in organic agriculture and what government is doing for that you can look the government of india is paying special attention to the areas disadvantaged region so mountainous region under developed areas by la launching area focused organic agriculture development schemes so you might have seen that in mountainous regions remote areas as i told earlier that they are already less they are using in comparison to areas well irrigated areas in the plains and where intensive agriculture production activity happens where lot of chemicals are being used in comparison to these areas in the hills mountainous states remote areas as i told earlier in ladakh andamans and then lakshadweep and also him, uh, mountainous states like himachal pradesh Ut uttarakhand so in the states in northern uh, north east india so they are mostly mountainous and use of existing current use of chemicals is very less so government is focusing on these dist areas for launching uh, organic agriculture schemes and there is one scheme i would like to mention here particularly mission organic value chain development for north eastern region mov cd ner so this scheme is act very active in the north eastern states of arunachal pradesh assam manipur meghalaya mizoram nagaland sikkim and tripura so then the government provided several incentives to these uh, states for promotion of agriculture in organic agriculture in these states uh, in the value chain mode because farmers don't need only production advice they need marketing advice also so we call it value chain so right from the pro production processing packaging and marketing 
these sets the farmers were supported under this MOVCD NER Mukvi Denner, what is this scheme name, Mission Organic Value Chain Development for Northeastern Region. It has helped assisted the farmers in the northeastern state of India and that was the, this scheme was focused to the northeastern state wherein they were given information about their capacities were built up, market access was provided wherein after producing and the processing advice guidance was given to them. So, entire on value chain mode the farmers were assisted in uh, production, processing and marketing of organic agriculture products in the northeastern states. So, this scheme was aiming as developing the certified organic production and linking them to the market. And then they were also helped in brand building because if you want to market product and if you want to uh, uh, draw benefit out of the organic products, you have to develop it as a brand. So, several uh, states and agencies are active in north and sta northeastern states wherein they are want to develop them as a plant. As a also other mountain states say for example, Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand Organic Commodity Board is very active in promoting organic agriculture development scheme since, since long it is there. So, Jammu and Kashmir is recently also have taken several initiatives to promote organic agriculture and they are developing as a brand say. Jammu and Kashmir organic or something like that they will they will promote so that apple from Kashmir like apple from Himachal. So, Kinnor apple you might have heard. So, likewise brand is very important. So, what brand and then brand can be promoted. So, now the uh, after the uh, from input seed certification and to various bio inputs were made available in the uh, this northeastern state. Uh, then collection aggregation processing marketing brand initiative several activities happened under this uh, area focus scheme in northeastern. The government of India through ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare has been promoting organ natural farming various schemes under Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana PKVI since 2014. So, this is PKVI was chosen as a central sector scheme under which several uh, programs and activities were initiated to promote organic farming. And there was national mission on sustainable agriculture under that also. So, several uh, schemes were launched and incentives farmers were incentivized to go for organic production. So, likewise these schemes has assisted many farmers in India to go for organic farming. So, as, as I told the large area certification under scheme. So, LAC uh, and PGS India scheme is there. So, likewise uh, government is coming up in several things and uh, budgetary allocation is also being made in different budget uh, different year. Say for example, the union budget have emphasized on organic and natural farming making available funds under various schemes. To give further boost to organic and natural farming, the government of India has launched this year on uh, February to, uh, 1, 2023 a new program PM Pranam. So, PM Pranam is a newest scheme, it is the very recent scheme. This scheme in incentivizes the states and union territories to promote alternative fertilizer to reduce the use of chemical fertilizers. Use of chemical fertilizer is a big problem because we want to reduce the cost of cultivation and in order to double the farming of uh, double the income of the farmers because the doub uh, doubling the farmers income has been a uh, prime goal of government of India and lot of emphasis is being paid and one of the way to double the farmers income was thought that we have to reduce the cultivation cost, production cost. And one of the way of reducing the cost of cultivation is reducing the use of the market purchase inputs from the uh, this one. Say for example, if you are able to reduce the dependence on the chemical fertilizer rather than if you are using the natural process by, by fertilizer and compost and all for farmyard manure and all these kind of thing as we used to do before the green revolution era that was before 1960s our production was quite organic in nature. We were dependent on cattle manure in the farming, but slowly slowly after that when the uh, dwarf varieties were introduced, hybrids were introduced and that and then in the irrigated areas where uh, there was uh, water was available for irrigating, lot of chemicals we started using and we started using dwarf varieties, hybrids and the we could increase significant amount of the farm production 
because of these chemicals. So, at that time we need it because there, there used to be famine and we were not having, we were importing food for our own consumption, there was a food scarcity, food insecurity was there. So, just to meet out this food insecurity problem, chemicals were applied in the farming in a very big way. So, then what happened? So, later on it also increased the cost of production. So, cost of high cost of agriculture production is harming both the farmers and also the consumers because the prices go up. So, the, the PM Pranam scheme is focused on reducing the use of chemicals in the agriculture. The National Mission for Clean Ganga NMCG or Namami Gange has initiated also this is another program which has initiated uh, projects on organic farming the, in the, along, the villages along the Ganga river right from its source in Gangotri in Uttarakhand till Ganga Sagar in West Bengal to curb pollution in its water. How we can reduce pollution in the Ganga river? The, the pollution also happen because of the agricultural chemicals. So, if your agriculture practices along the Ganga river are organic in nature, no chemicals are being used. So, we can think that the, the water is clean. So, under this Namami Ganga scheme or the National Mission for Clean Ganga, and Namami scheme, uh, Namami Gange scheme, the funds have been sanctioned and the various states which through which Ganga river flows, this scheme is being implemented and the, the various states are announcing the target uh, area on which organic farming can be promoted. Uttar Pradesh is also following this scheme, Uttarakhand is also doing. So, similarly other states are also programming. This project alone is likely to add 50,000 hectare land in organic farming in Uttarakhand which is mostly hilly and mountainous because in Uttarakhand as I told already hilly and mountainous states already organic agriculture is being followed by many farmers and because chemical use is also very less. So, uh, then uh, more area along the river uh, Ganga. So, land is being brought under organic farming. Uttar Pradesh government is promoting organic farming within the radius of 5 kilometers of the river Ganga. So, because river Ganga has a long uh, track in uh, Uttar Pradesh. So, Uttar Pradesh government is promoting by announcing some incentivizing the farmers to switch over to organic farming. Most of the states in India now are having or or organic certification bodies which certify organic farm products comparatively at cheaper rates than that of private certifiers. Because organic certification is done by the private certification agencies, they have their own uh, system of certification following the guidelines under NPOP they are doing it, but the just to make certification cheaper, the state certification agencies are there. Say for example, Uttar Pradesh seed and organic certification agencies, they are like in Madhya Pradesh. Likewise, many other state is now having state specific organic certification agencies which certify the organic production as per the guidelines issued by the under the national program on organic production. Many farmer producer organization, many individual farmers are doing that thing fine, but the APOs are including by the women farmer groups. Now, they are also going for organic production. So, combined because individual farmers, if one is having, you know that in India more than 80 percent of the land holding are less than 1 hectare. In a small scale farming, because the total volume is very less and the guideline says that your neighboring farmers should not be using chemicals because water flow from that land to the neighboring farmers land. So, these restrictions are there. So, uh, often it is very difficult for is, is, is small scale farmers to switch over to organic farming. So, what, what they can do? They can uh, pool up. So, they can make a cluster. The farmers may be 30 farmers, 40 farmers come together and they can pool up their land and they can in entire area, that area can be declared as organic, can get, get the one, they can get it as a FPO, they can get it certified as a organic area and the all operations can be done, then volume will be more and they can be, the organic farming is better. Otherwise, a small farmer who is having one acre land, if he will be doing organic farming, it will be very difficult for him because the, because the rain water will flow from one farm to another, chemical will for the organic standards restrict that kind of farming. So, cluster based farming, group farming is very good for uh, organic farming. Now, also government is coming up with the standards on the grower groups. So, on the group basis, grower groups are there. So, when they are farming in the groups, so they, they are for the separate standards are being developed for them. So, how they can do group farming and norms, standards, guidelines are being evolved, being developed 
and so pe people for this, it, that grower group scheme will be very helpful for the small scale farmers. Government is currently developing the norms and almost this, this has been developed. So, once it comes up, so it will be very good for farmers to go for organic farming. So far they were feeling very constrained. Say, I, I would like to mention here a very good example of the cooperatives coming into organic. The Women Dairy Cooperative with the organic brand name Sundarini sells organic milk and milk products in West Bengal, supported by West Bengal Mill Dairy Cooperative Federation and it is also supported by National Dairy Development Board. And the, you can see this is one of the very finest example which will be followed up by many uh, dairy cooperatives later on. So, because the one good example when looking at its success, so many other uh, dairy federations will come forward, they will also go for milk production. So, right now India has also started exporting, uh, so far we were exporting mostly spices, sugar and this kind of spice, uh, cotton, tea, coffee and rice as organic product. But now slowly we are entering into because of the so, uh, very good support for the government agencies and uh, very, very institutions and then uh, the dairy cooperatives, we are now and the private dairy companies. So, we are now having, uh, we have also entered government, uh, India, India has entered into export of the organic animal products also, especially milk. So, we are exporting cheese for example and butter oil that we ghee we are exporting to uh, United Arab Emirates and uh, UAE and other countries in the Gulf. And then there is there are good prospects that we can export later on to these countries organic meat products, egg products, egg powder organic. So, that we, this is a new opportunity for the farmers where they can maximize their profit by entering into organic production. Government agencies like ICR institutes, Krishi Vigyan Kendra, state agriculture universities and several other organizations are regularly organizing capacity building programs. So, training programs, a lot many tra training programs are going on. So, in, in, in India, various different agencies are uh, organizing these training programs. So, then the different stakeholder groups, uh, they need training. So, as I told you earlier that national program on organic production uh, uh, document this document you can have you can have a look this is this in the form and you can you, you can download this document from the internet from website you can of npop uh, program of the apida so then there if you are interested in organic livestock and poultry production these guidelines are also there and there are guidelines for honeybees also so if you are looking further for information there are some lot of now literature are coming up in both regional languages also in english say for example this book organic livestock farming written by me in 2013 it was published by indian council of agriculture research so this book also gives some information how to go about organic animal husbandry likewise this is the document produced by sikkim organic mission so that gives the guidelines how to switch over from conventional animal husbandry to organic animal husbandry. This is a very specialized field and then there are for guidelines, standards for organic breeding, feeding, management, disease control, processing, every guideline you will find in this uh, the basic document and the NPOP by the government of India, APIDA and then further you can look into these documents the, like this book by this the document. Likewise, you will find if you if you search for different states also have their state specific policy which are available in the internet you can look into you can find online this one so as i told that icr sanctioned several programs short courses or training programs uh, the, uh, on organic agriculture looking at the importance of organic agriculture indian council of agriculture research indian council of agriculture research icr sanctions regularly several uh, institutions, state agriculture universities, ICR institutes have time to time organized. Say for example, I organized one program in 2000, uh, 2006 and almost later on two, three more programs were organized for the different stakeholders. The stakeholder can be university teachers, scientists, field extension functionaries, the farmers. So, all different categories of the, uh, they, they need training. Uh, so, we organize for example, the, for the field veterinarians training program, how to how to treat animals uh, on following organic practices, how to convert conventional organic production to the organic production. So, it is the video. So, these field veterinarians also they need training in this area. Likewise, extension service providers, they need, uh, they need to be provided training. Not only these people, 
the certification agencies also they need training on how to certify organic production. Say, so we organize training from livestock certification for the Rajasthan Organic Certification Agency. So, then they, they got training and they once after having training, now they are eligible to certify organic livestock operations. As I told about the West Bengal Dairy Cooperative Organic uh, Production, Organic Milk Production, they were certified by Rajasthan Organic Certification Agency. So, this uh, they, they, they were trained. So, they are trained and they were eligible. Likewise, Aditi certification in Bangalore. So, they are the, this is a certification agency. Likewise, there are 30 certification agency. If you look at National Program on Organic Production NPOP document by APIDA, so they have annexed and they have given the all the addresses of certification agencies. You can you can look into and those agency, if you have any intention to switch over to organic uh, production, you can look into and you can get in touch with these certification agencies. So, they will give you the guidelines guidelines. So, they will suggest you and they will help you out how to switch over to organic production because it is highly skill oriented. So, many farmer groups are now visiting several organic operations. So, they, they are being taken. Say for example, in ICR institutes, so farmer groups they request that we want to see some uh, operations, organic farming operations and they want and some training being organized. Say, so, recently there are many RCR institutes which are having that NPO project, they give training to the farmers and they are taken to the different organic farms for visit, so that seeing is believing we know. So, then Indian Institute of Farming System, versus IFAFR, National Institute of Organic. So, they uh, this, uh, this center, National Center for Organic and Natural Farming at Ghaziabad, they are organizing on regular basis for youth and the all other farmers on training and so it will be, it is always better. If you, if you want to go for organic production, you have, you should undergo training, some kind of a training, so that your capacity can be improved and you can do it well, because without training it is very difficult to do. So, and then there are several initiative has been taken by different ministries. So, by Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying, they have, they and then uh, through NDDB, they want to monetize the cow dung, because cow dung is there. So, we have to make best use of the cow dung, how it can be made more usable and it is a multiple uses how it can be done. National Dairy Development Board under Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying, they are promoting uh, this cow dung based schemes. Likewise, different state governments are also coming up with the mudra for, uh, from Gomutra, this is a uh, Godan Nyaya Yojana that is in Chhattisgarh. Likewise, in different states there are uh, schemes for promotion uh, cattle cow dung based uh, making product. Like uh, initiative of uh, science and technology ministry, there is one scheme why Sutra was uh, uh, launched by the uh, ministry, Department of Science and Technology under Ministry of Science and Technology. So, then they are they are uh, approving the project, they are inviting proposals to submit proposal on cattle, cattle urine, cow dung and cow dung based several products. So, if you can turn it into, into valuable product, so we can that will also help maximize the income of the farmers. Say for example, so right now farmer can be depending only on the milk products or meat products and all. So, they have to see the animal entirely, other products coming from the animals also. So, if the manure can be turned, so this manure will be recycled into the farm and that will help improve productivity of the organic farms. So, these uh, the, the, the different ministries are involved. Already I have talked about the largest uh, uh, large area certification scheme, which is going in the uh, remote area and then it can be certified. So, then once the area has been declared, the product coming from that area will be declared as organic product and uh, the consumers will have a good uh, farm produce. Uh, their list. So, as in the beginning I told natural farming, alongside the organic farming, now government is pushing up and promoting natural farming in a big way. So, when this that is something very new, of course, our ancestors were used to do natural farming only, using the national processes for organic agriculture or, or agriculture production, but now it is being revived, our old traditions are being revived. So, so for that it is, uh, it is being uh, uh, done uh, by capacity building by the Krishi Vigyan Kendra. Uh, and then ICR uh, institutions, state agriculture universities, they are building up the capacity of the farmers on the, this one. Bija Mirtha you might have heard. So, the many uh, kind of the product based uh, on the uh, urine or cow dung, it is these are being developed, which are being used for the boosting the productivity, for the seed treatment and for the for soil uh, improvement. 
so pasu uh, so we we call it mrda poshan so poshan and all the kind of, so improving the soil fertility soil health so the our uh, cattle dung based product are being used and the farmers are being trained on these kind of uh, these things now you see the ice indian council of agriculture research so then you can you can look into all these capacity building programs are being uh, through the website they are being shared so that people can benefit and they can find out where such trainings are available so you can visit the activities of the krishi vigyan kendra in india because now ev almost every district in india is having one krishi vigyan kendra at least some of the bigger districts are having two krishi vigyan kendra these krishi vigyan kendra are meant for improving the capacity of the rural youth women and all the categories of farmers and they they are they big they give training so then the farmers training it is their mandate apart from on farm trials and uh, FLDs, frontline demonstrations, they do impart training and then they could, if any farmer and if any one of you is interested to know about the organic agriculture, so I would say that Krishi Vigyan Kendra is the institu institu institute, institution where you can visit to find out more about and what kind of training program they are giving, they are uh, offering on organic farming as well as on natural farming. Also the Directorate of Extension of the State Agriculture Universities one can visit to know about. They organize several training programs for the farmers and likewise some ICR institutes also. They organize training programs, different uh, ICR institutes, they have, you will find some people there who, who, are, who can give guidance on this kind of uh, uh, farming. So they, they are supposed to do it and then you can request them. So, uh, customized trainings also they can they can provide. Then there are videos also, a number of videos on organic farming, how it is done, know how it can be being shared or also on natural farming. So, you can you can find out several videos may produced by the several agencies. So, you can find, so then you can learn from these videos because nowadays many people are learning from the YouTube videos. So, you can, you, can, you can use YouTube videos, you can personally visit Krishi Vigyan Kendra, agriculture institutions like the state agriculture universities, Indian Council of Agriculture Research Institutions to get the guidance because you have to, the knowledge will come from the different corners and then you can synthesize that information and that can be used and then you can apply in your own form. So, there are now fortunately many institutions and then internet is a big help, lot of information is available in the webs website internet, internet, you can browse internet and you can find out the videos, several videos are there on organic farming now, there is no dearth on this and then every commodity in the every crop, organic rice production, organic wheat production, organic spices production, organic animal production and all of that like that, you will find all the information globally. So, if not from India, you can find from other uh, countries, you can adapt that information in Indian situation. So, there is no uh, uh, the, there is no uh, dearth of information available now. So, I would before I would I can I can summarize uh, before I uh, uh, conclude it, I can say that now you do number of things in order to improve your awareness. First of all, you you look into APIDA website, go for national program on organic production. NPOP, you study the NPOP document very well, then the, all the guidelines, all the standards have been given there and all the details are available, how it is done and then. Second thing, you get in touch with certification agency. This certification agencies, as I told, there are around 30 certification agency, I do not know the exact number, but you can find out from NPOP document, which are the certification agencies, get in touch with them and then then if you have decided to switch over to organic, there is three years of conversion period is there. Say for example, today you decide for organic farming, uh, converting to organic farming, switching over to, then it will take conversion time. So you and then you look for the various government schemes and programs which can support you. Say for example, as I told, if you are along the, if you, your farm is located along the Ganga river, you can cast upon the scheme which have been, which are helping incentivizing the farmers through a Nam, uh, Namami Gange scheme, you can take advantage of that one. And then you can get in touch with the state agriculture department, ICR institutions, state agriculture universities and then you can, you will find inform, wherever information is available, lot of books, 
that uh, extension literature is available you know so the extension literature has been published by various institution and then package of practices are available for different crops now different icr institutes are also having package of practices on organic farming say if you want to grow rice organically you will find extension literature leaflets bulletins published by the state agricultural universities or even icr institutes so you will find all literature that is available so this literature available tv, uh, TV programs you know, you know the uh, farm programs are coming up now in a big number so you can use make use of the farm uh, radio program farm tv program the youtube videos then personal contact of the extension agent you can find out information you can take from them and then likewise and then you can also you can you can visit the institutions and you can request customized uh, training from them for themselves a group of a farmer if you are approaching and if you are a young group of the rural youth and want to undergo training and then as i told national center of organic and natural farming they provide training to your rural youth so they they also give certificate courses they offer so you can you can go for that certification co uh, course so uh, qualification is generally 12th standard if you are pass on and you can you can apply for this training whenever they are announcing the training program this is the way you can improve your capacity on uh, organic farming so you have to make best use of the these institutions so because you are the major stakeholder as a farmer producer so you can you can look into the training program so that as i am showing here this this kind of training program is not going on one institution but many num many number of institutions now they are engaged in the training programs on organic and natural farming and then also if you are further, further interested in kind of a certificate course diploma course degree degree course so all these are available so by the various institution you can make us make use of these institutions to improve your capacity so that you can do uh, organic farming in a very uh, right manner and then various government uh, schemes and policies are there which are supportive of organic agriculture you can be you can start in a small way and you can turn out to be a big uh, big farmer organic producer and then again what i would say that for a small scale fa farmers it is a little bit difficult to do it but if they are um, forming a group it will be much easier for them though there are many small scale farmer they are doing very well in organic farming and they are able to take uh, the, their product as a certified organic product to market but again i would say that if they can organize themselves into a group producer group producing organic product they can do very well so i would suggest that forming group or clusters for it will be good for them and certification agencies are there which can utilize if they cannot afford higher prices and they if you want there they are the state certification agencies are there which certify their product so you can look into the various agencies which are helping farmers to go organic so finally i just because this whatever whatever information i could give to you i believe that you it it must be helpful it should be helpful to you you can make good use of this information to and then you can help others also how to go organic once you have done it it is our duty to help others also you can help many other people to go organic so you can look into the different information which i have provided here and you make good use of it and finally i say thank you